Now, the title of this brief really sums up the argument I want to make. Uh, the title is Healthy Competition. And by that, I mean competition that's designed to make Americans better cared for and more secure. Nobody today can defend our current system as promoting healthy competition. And in healthy competition, what's crucial is not that there be an endless array of choices, but that there be meaningfully different choices. And so a very big part of the argument for having a public plan competing with private plans within the exchange is that that public plan can offer values that, that private plans are generally unable or unwilling to provide. <coughs> so what I'm arguing for is a system in which both public and private plans are, which, with their unique strengths and weaknesses, are able to coexist side by side so that all Americans, not just the elderly or the poor, have access to the distinctive strengths of a public health insurance plan as well as the strengths of private plans. The same basic rules need to apply to both public and private plans. That means, for starters, that any subsidies that are available for coverage should, be should go to any plan on exactly the same terms. The public plan uh, should receive subsidies when low-income uh, enrollees and middle-income enrollees uh, come into the plan, but so too should private plans. Put another way, from the standpoint of enrollees, the basic help that they receive with their premium costs should not hinge on whether they enroll in the public or a private plan. I argue that there should be a set of insurance rules that should apply equally or more or less equally because there's some differences between public and private plans to all the plans. There should be community rating, guaranteed issue, limits on markets, some standardization of benefits, uh, transparency, and there should be reserve requirements for the private plans. This is the one place where there has to be a departure between the private plans and the public plan. Private plans need to have adequate reserves to pay benefits. The public plan, because it's a governmental entity, should probably only have what's sometimes called a premium stabilization fund, a pool that allows it to keep premiums more or less um, stable over time. Um, but importantly, as I said before, there is a counterpart to the reserve requirements of private plans. It's a rule that the public plan should not be allowed to draw on general revenues for its basic operation. We're improving our ability to adjust uh, for the, the risk status of enrollees in health plans and that the payments that the plans receive must be risk adjusted. Um, this is really confusing to some people because they think, well, does that mean that the premiums that individuals pay are risk adjusted? So I want to be clear. The premiums that people pay are community rated. They're the same premiums for a basic family uh, type uh, for all enrollees. But the plans get paid uh, from the exchange on a risk-adjusted basis so that plans that enroll people who have higher expected costs get compensated for that. Um, we are at the point, I think, with the technology of risk adjustment that we can do this in a way that will reduce a lot of the incentive for plans to select healthy enrollees rather than focusing on delivering value to all people enrolled. Politicians and our, and, our, and our political leaders recognize that this is something that Americans greatly value and need. Um, we at Healthcare for America now commissioned a poll and found that there was overwhelming support for having a choice between public and private insurance uh, among Americans. And this is true among Republicans as well as Democrats. And when presented with arguments against having that choice, uh, Americans are ver still very strongly in support of it. And the number one uh, argument that they support for having the public uh, plan competing with private plans is that it will provide a check on private insurance plans, a, a source of accountability in the market, if you will. And that's the argument that I'm making today. The Healthcare for America Now Coalition, of which we are a proud uh, part, uh, MoveOn.org, and other groups that are, that are sponsoring many of these uh, forums around the country have a very simple message to Congress, and that is don't cut the heart out of President Obama's health care plan. The heart of Obama's plan that he ran on and got a mandate for in the, in the election uh, involves a, a public option, a, the option of choice of a public plan. And, um, and the message that many uh, members of Congress are getting uh, and should get loud and clear is they, they, sh they should give uh, Congress a vote, give the people a vote on a, a public insurance plan as part of a comprehensive reform.